Nigeria, a multi-ethnic, culturally diverse and resource-rich nation, seventh largest population in the world, largest economy in Africa, key regional player in West Africa, accounting for about half of the region's population with approximately 202 million people. Despite all of this, the country continues to face massive developmental challenges. 40% of Nigerians live below the poverty line with high maternal mortality rates and dilapidated health facilities, rising unemployment, regional inequality, social and political unrest. But why, you may ask? Well, this is what happens when our political structure is not reflective of society. How can we make progressive and inclusive policies when over half of the population are excluded from political leadership and critical decision making? Only 37 seats out of 636 have been occupied by women in the Senate since 1999. Of all the 2,160 seats since 1999 at the Federal House of Representatives, only 112 have been occupied by women. And in the State House of Assembly, only 236 seats out of 5,940 have been occupied by women since 1999. Since transition into democracy, Nigeria has never had a female president, a female vice president, nor an elected female governor. I don't care how competent she is, never. A woman will never rule us. Women are weak and sentimental to rule a nation. Prostitute, irresponsible woman. Let us scare her with violence so she drops from the race. Who will marry you if you go into politics? How do I fund my campaign? Why are fellow women not supporting me? Why are most of the critical party meetings in the middle of the night? He molested me but I have been warned to say nothing about it if I want the party support. All the party delegates are men. We do not support gender quotas. They are discriminatory. I want to run for office. Where do I start from? The full and equitable participation of women in public life is essential to building and sustaining strong, vibrant democracies. When women hold leadership positions, they propose structural reforms that have a redistributive agenda, address structural inequalities, and provide social safety nets. Over the past decade, in the face of the deadliest health pandemics, women have shown competence, class, and action prioritizing human-centric decision-making to protect the lives of citizens and, in effect, protect the economy. From 2014, President Erlin Sirleaf Johnson, the first democratically elected female president in Africa, led a very fragile post-conflict Liberia out of the deadly Ebola outbreak, mobilizing international collaboration and prompt responses. At the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern of New Zealand, Sanna Marin of Finland, Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany, and a host of other women leaders across the world all displayed empathetic and transformational leadership. When you see a competent woman, encourage her to run. When you see a woman run, open up spaces for her. Provide her with level playing field. Judge her not on the basis of her gender, but by her competence. Enable her with the required human, social, financial, and technological capital. And when she finally wins, celebrate her. Hold her accountable, document her story, and treat her equally. Equality cannot wait. Increased women's political representation is not a sentimental want. It is a need one instrumental to the socio-economic survival of our dear nation, Nigeria. It is time for our country to start looking like the people it represents, as there is no democracy without equal participation.